Good morning friends and welcome again to our YouTube channel Engineers World. Today I am going to start a new lecture series of Reinforced Cement Concrete. So today will be the introductory lecture regarding RCC. So before starting with RCC, I will discuss some points about concrete. As every one of us know what concrete is, concrete we can simply define it as a mass which is made from any, from any cementing material and it consists of fine aggregate as sand and coarse aggregate as gravel and water is also added and these ingredients are mixed and they form the concrete. See, why, why do we recommend concrete over other building materials? Uh, it has following reasons. Concrete is highly durable even under hostile environmental conditions. It can be easily casted into any shape and size and it is relatively cheaper and widely available. Now, if we had concrete already there, then why there was a need for RCC? See, the main thing is that, see, if we see about the properties of concrete, the concrete is weak in tension. That means its tensile strength is very less as compared to its compressive strength. So in, in order to increase its tensile, tensile strength, we provide reinforcing bars made up of steel in the tension zone. For example, this is a cross section of a simple rectangular beam. So to increase its tensile strength, we provide reinforcing bars in tension zone. So that was the need for introduction of reinforced cement concrete. Now with the development of reinforced concrete, concrete itself has gained much importance because it has it can resist significant amount of tensile stresses as well as strains also now see the various course i'll talk about the course which are related with reinforced cement design or whatever first one and the most important is is 456 2000 see this code is uh, regarding the plane and a reinforced cement concrete code of practice you can see other codes are IS875 part 1 to 5 these are regarding design loads that is dead load, live load, load combination, snow load, earth, snow load and IS 1893 2002 this is regarding earthquake resistant design of structures I'll make it here IS 1893 2002 this is regarding earthquake resi resistant design of structures and we also have one more code IS 13920 this is regarding ductile detailing so these were some of the important codes which you need to remember now we will move on to a topic called as characteristic strength of concrete which is denoted as FCK. What is this? Characteristic strength of concrete. Now see due to wide variation in the characteristics of concrete constituents like sand, coarse aggregates etc. Concrete is subjected to considerable variation in strength. Also due to non-homogeneous mixture of concrete, specimen taken 
from the same mix make your different compressive strength and test so we need to define new term as the characteristic strength so it is defined as that strength of material below which not more than 5% of the test results are expected to fall so it is that type of strength in which not less than 5% of the test results are expected to fail so this is the characteristic strength so if i uh, if i show it graphically if we take if we conduct the 28 days compressive strength test of some specimen then we plot a graph between 28 day strength and these are the specimens this is specimen so we find out that the graph comes like this see if this is the peak of the graph then as per definition uh, not uh, more than 5% of tests of, of test results are expected to fail so those this 5% area is sh uh, shown by this shaded region so this is 5% area so and if we talk about this uh, uh, this strength this is called as target mean strength denoted by fm and this portion is equal to 1.65 times the standard deviation so this is basically the normal distribution of concrete strength see this was normal distribution so from the given di above diagram or given diagram we can calculate the relation between target mean strength and characteristic strength so see this was our target mean strength this this portion is fck or characteristic strength so from this graph we come to a relation as fm that is target mean strength is equal to fck characteristic strength plus 1.65 sigma as you can see here this portion is fck and this is 1.65 sigma so our this portion that is target mean strength will be equal to fck plus 1.65 sigma see here standard deviation is as we have already been studying under root of summation x m minus x but x minus x per whole square upon n minus 1 now see it has been found as per the is recommendation the values of this sigma are already given in is code so table 5 5 of is 456 gives the values of sigma so the various values of this sigma can be as see it now it depends upon grade see for m 
10 and M15, the value of sigma as per the IS code is 3.5. For M20 and M25, the value of sigma is 4. And from M30 onwards, the value of sigma is 5. So these values of standard deviations are directly taken from IS code. So this was all about the characteristic strength and targeting strength. Now we will move on to a next topic. See, now this is a rectangular RCC beam section in which this is the tensile steel or tensile reinforcement. This is the center of tensile reinforcement. This is the width B of the beam cross section and this is the overall depth D. Now here comes an important term called as effective depth. So every one of us know what effective depth is. It is a distance or depth from the topmost compression fiber to the center of tensile reinforcement. But what can you say? What will be the effective depth in case of a beam having this type of tension reinforcement? See, in this case, the effective depth will be depth from the topmost compression fiber to the CG of the tensile reinforcement. So, this is an important point to be noted here. Now, overall depth is equal to effective depth plus effective cover. You can say uh, denoted by D dash. So, effective cover is this distance. Distance from bottommost fiber, that is tension fiber, to the center of tensile reinforcement. So, this was the definition of effective depth. Now, here is one more topic to be discussed. If we are neglecting the concrete on tension side, then our beam becomes, uh, the beam cross section becomes like this. See, we are neglecting this. We are considering only this. So in this case, we will make use of only effective depth, not overall depth. So this is a type of, this section is called as cracked section. Now, recently I uh, discussed about the various mixes like M10, M25, M25, M30, M35. So as per IS456, the minimum grade of concrete should be, uh, minimum, minimum grade of concrete that should be used, minimum grade that should be used in case of RCC should be M20. See, this M stands for mix and this 20 is your characteristic strength. Now we will discuss about the various exposure conditions which concrete faces or in which concrete can be placed. So the various concrete, uh, exposure conditions There are various exposure conditions like mild, moderate, severe, very severe and the last one is extreme. So on the basis of these exposure conditions the code has defined the minimum concrete grade. The IS code, IS456 has defined the minimum concrete grade to be used. 
So for mild exposure condition, minimum grade to be used is M20. Must remember. For moderate condition, it is M25. For severe, it is M30. And for very severe exposure condition, it is M35. And for extreme condition, it is M40. So these were the grades of concrete to be used on the basis of exposure conditions. Now, this is all about today's lecture. This is basically an introductory lecture. So the so I'll not teach more in this lecture. So that's all for today. Hope you would have liked the.